Hey, today we're gonna to be talking about five tips to help you at your next Magicon event. Waffles in the morning, syrup sweet and slow. Golden stacks are rising, sunrise in the glow. Sticky choice so grand, breakfast on demand. Smile and take my hand in waffle wonderland. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Waffle Cast. So today we're gonna to be going over five tips for whether it be your first Magicon, your eighth Magicon, your hundredth Magicon, doesn't matter. Maybe you haven't heard of these uh, little tips and tricks that I'm gonna spew today. Um, they are things that I wish I knew or that I learned while going to a Magicon or two big major events that I've been to. I've been to uh, multiple GP events, PTQs, RCQs, I mean, you name it, I've probably played in it. So, um, <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down f the top five things that I, I, to myself, are important when I go on to trips like these. Um, last year, I went to MagicCon Vegas, and I wish I could go again this year. Don't have the funds or time to go, but I will be trying to make it next year. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into tip number one. And that has a lot to do with before you even get to the event. Like, we're two weeks away from MagicCon, well, it's like a week and a half, really, if you're watching this the Wednesday it came out. Um, but if you're watching it later, maybe you're planning for your next uh, MagicCon or your first one that's a couple months away. This first tip, planning your hotel, travel, and events, okay? It, it's probably the most important thing, in my opinion. Planning the hotel, your travel accommodations, and which events you're gonna be playing in. Because a lot of the times these events, the big ones that like the Gavin Verhey mystery or whatever, these, these fun events on the side events that they do like one or two of, they sell out really quickly. So when the when like they just put up the schedule for next year's Magicons, when they start to go live and you can start to see the events, purchase the events you wanna play in ahead of time. Okay, that way there's no stress, there's no figuring it out when you get there because it may already be sold out by the time you get there. Second of all in that is you wanna look at how you're gonna get there, whether it be plane, car, train, boat, whatever. Uh, let's say you live in, you know, you're gonna go to Magicon Vegas and you live in Ohio. Obviously you're probably gonna have to take a plane. Um, so figure out what days you want to travel, whether it be on a Thursday, you want to show up a day before, you want to show up Friday, whatever it may be. I highly advise you show up at least the day before, get settled into your hotel room, get a feel for the surrounding areas, how you're going to get to and from the venue, things like that. Um, and then travel while you're there. Um, I went last year to MagicCon Vegas. I looked at the bus route schedules. I looked at where my hotel was. My hotel was literally five minute walking distance. That was another thing I planned for. Uh, yeah, you may have to pay a little bit more, but what you pay more in the hotel room, you make up on the other end of not having to travel. So I had a five minute walk and it was super easy. I, I, and also at the end of the day, when the, the event was over, I walked five minutes back to my hotel room and boom, I was back in my room, ready to go to sleep if I needed to. So look at bus schedules. Uh, maybe there's taxis. Uh, maybe there's like a monorail system like Westgate in L uh, Las Vegas. I was gonna say LA, I don't know why. Um, in Las Vegas, um, all these different options to be able to travel because Lyft and Uber is very expensive. And I know some of you out there prefer it. Hey, that's that's on you. Uh, that's that's what you like. But I'm trying to maximize your guys' money and time with these tips. So uh, number one, plan for your travel there. Number two, plan your hotel. Once you know your hotel, plan your travel around the area. Are you going to be only going to the venue? Are you guys gonna be going out to the casinos if you're in Vegas or wherever it may be? You know, plan all these things. And lastly, make sure you get your events scheduled ahead of time, because that will really help with you knowing where your time's allocated, where you're going when you're at the event, all of these different other things, right? All right, so tip number two, okay? Food and water. Okay, food is really, really expensive at these events. I went last year to get a thing of three chicken strips was like $13 and that's all you got. No drink, no fries, no nothing else. It was just $13 for chicken strips. Like that is absurd. One of the things that I would do, you can plan this ahead of time or when you show up, 
is look at the surrounding areas of where you're going to be at, which is either the convention center or your hotel room, and see if there's a grocery store or a convenience store like a gas station like 7-Eleven or whatever you're accustomed to where you can grab food to eat. The really good items are like having bananas and apples and water and protein bars and granola bars and all these easy, fast, accessible foods. But it's also good to have uh, to be able to like make sandwiches or bring something that doesn't need to be heated in a microwave or that can last all day in your backpack and not go bad. So that's why uh, last year, what I would normally do is first thing in the morning, I would go bre grab breakfast somewhere. Maybe I went to McDonald's, got a couple of uh, English muffins, two for $4 or whatever deal they were having. And then I would immediately stop at like 7-Eleven or a grocery store and pick up a ton of snacks and stuff for the day. As far as water goes, you can bring your own water bottle, Depending on how the travel goes with airplanes and everything, I don't know if you can bring containers like that anymore or if you can just have it empty in your bag. If you can have it empty in your bag, just throw it in your bag. A lot of these events, these convention centers, have refillable water fountains. So you can take your water bottle over, refill it, boom, good, good to go. So that's what I advise. Make sure you plan out your food because let's say you're there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's three different meals you're gonna need to eat with some snacks or whatever else. Maybe you're not a heavy eater. Maybe you just snack all day. Whatever it is, go to Costco or whatever and bring a ton of like protein bars, like Cliff Bars or whatever you're into, right? And you can have those with you in the, in the uh, I believe you can bring those with you on the plane. So you'll be perfectly fine. Just bring a bunch of that stuff and you're good to go with that, right? And then just pick up your meal foods like Maybe you want to eat out at like Burger King or McDonald's or maybe one of the nights you and a group of friends are going to go out to eat for dinner and that's perfectly acceptable. I mean, I mean, unless you don't have friends like me. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, plan those things, you know, be ready for it. And you don't want to be so rigid with your schedule that you don't get to go out to eat with friends or you don't do certain things. I'm not telling you to do that. Okay. Just plan ahead. So with that, we're going to get into tip number three, which you can do prior to going to the event or you can do while, let's say, you get there Thursday night in your hotel room. I think it's a little bit easier to do this beforehand. That way you're ready to go with it. But for selling and trading cards, right, you don't want to go to the vendor and be like, oh, man, you're sitting there and the vendor's like looking through your cards and you're trying to pull out, oh, maybe I want to sell this. No, well, where'd that one card go? This, that. Have your stuff ready, like grab a box, grab these little like fat pack boxes or bundle boxes and fill up one of them with all the stuff you're willing to sell slash trade. That way when you get to the booth, you just slap that thing down, they start thumbing through it, they're quick to do it and they tell you, hey, this is how much you're getting and you go, cool, thank you and you move on because I, I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna maximize as much time here as possible. There's so much going on at these events that if you don't manage your time wisely, you're gonna miss out on a couple things. And so having all of the, the cards that you're willing to sell or trade readily available for whether you go to a vendor, whether you're sitting at the trading tables or somebody comes up and it's like, hey, do you have this card? I wanna buy it off you. And you're like, oh yeah, I got one of those right here. Boom, ready to go, okay? Number four. And this is another time management one. Artist, okay? I went last year, Richard Kane Ferguson. His line took me two, I think it was almost three hours to get through, okay? A lot of the other artists I went to, probably 10, 15 minutes. Go to the highly sought after artist first, okay? Whether it be Steve Argyle, Richard Kane Ferguson, uh, John Avon, those are three of the top big names that were there last year. I don't know if they'll be there this year. I didn't get a chance to look at the list. But if they are there again this year and you did not get a chance last year to them, make them your top priority. Go to the top artist first. They are going to be a huge time sink, but once they are done, you have free range to hit all the other artists because guess what? You get those done first, everybody else is gonna be stuck in those lines. So you go to the other ones, Let's say you want Steve Prescott or Howard Lyon or any of the other guys like, you know, Mark Teeden that aren't super long lines. Boom, you jump in line, you're in and out. That's and and to go with that also is the the specialty booths, okay? Not only artists but specialty booths. Like um there was I think it was um god, what was um there was a charity booth that you could go to, you pay $25, you got grab bag of a uh, collector booster and a, and a pin. Look for these specialty booths and 
um, especially downstairs too, because upstairs was a lot of boost. But downstairs, you know, if they have the um, the commander gaming, the arena gaming, the interviews, like all these other things, be ready for long lines on those too. So get a hold of the schedule, the times of when these meet and greets and all these other things are going on, and be ready for them because it's it's going to be a time sink. Okay. But if you're smart about it and you plan ahead, you can maximize your time and make it very efficient, okay? So the last thing, last tip I wanna bring up, and it's a very crucial tip because um, I wish I had known this last time I went to MagicCon, so I'm helping you guys out with this. If you do play in a ton of side events and, or events that net you tickets or points or whatever the redemption is for this year, go as soon as you're done. Meaning, let's say Saturday night, uh, the ticket booth closes at like nine o'clock, right? And you're done with your side events at like seven. And you're like, ah, I'll just come tomorrow and redeem my tickets. No, do not wait till the last day to redeem your tickets. One, what you want will probably be gone. And two, everybody waits till the end because they wanna hoard as many tickets, they wanna buy the tickets off people, they wanna do as much as they can, okay? If you wait till the very last minute, you're gonna wait in that line for at least two to three hours. I tell you this because that's what happened to me. I waited, I waited, and before I knew it, I was like, whoa, I am waiting in a long line. The other thing with the tickets, if you do not care about the tickets or the prize wall, seek out the people who will buy them off of you because you can sell them. Now, if you get tickets and you don't redeem them, they're completely useless after the event. So if you're not going to use them, find the people that are willing to buy them. And sometimes, yes, it may not seem like you're getting a whole lot, but you have to realize you did play in an event and it's almost like getting your money back in a sense. Like let's say it costs you, I don't know, 20 bucks to get in a draft and you end up winning the draft and you can sell the tickets for let's say five, six bucks. Hey, you got cards out of the draft. You had a fun experience and you got a little bit of money back. So what's it hurt? So those are the five tips I have for you today for MagicCon. If you have any other tips that you can think of that I didn't touch on, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to think, what you have to think, what you have to say. God, words are hard, right? But I do wanna leave you with one last bonus tip, okay? And I think this is the most important tip of all. Have fun, okay? You're going to have an experience, you're going to have fun. Yes, planning out will greatly reduce your stress, may save you a lot of time, may save you a lot of money, but in the long run, you're going to have fun. You're going to meet with other people. You're going to play Magic the Gathering and with a ton of other people that love to play this game. Have fun, don't stress too much about it. Things aren't always gonna go as planned and be flexible with your plans, okay? Because, hey, they might cancel an event or they might add more events and you're like, cool, I wanna jump in that because I actually saved some time in case something cool came up. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of this. I hope um, you know my experience playing at some of these events will help you guys if you've never been to these before. They're super fun, super awesome, and they can be a little overwhelming. But like I said, if you plan ahead, you're gonna be just fine, okay? So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave some comments down below. If you have any questions, Maybe I didn't touch on something and you, you have a question about something, leave it down below. I will answer the questions as best as I can with my known experience and what I've seen in some of these events and I will do my best to help you out. But anyways, I'm gonna leave you guys like I always do. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and stay syrupy, my friends. Waffles in the morning, syrup's eating slow, golden stacks around.